Many will tell you that Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is a game that is nothing like the Soulsborne series made by the same developer from software. Well, I am here to tell you after playing through the game that that is not the case. This game is very similar to the Soulsborne series, but is that a bad thing? Not at all. Even though Sekiro is in the same vein as the Soulsborne series, there are some differentiations. For instance, there is this new edgy hookshot Spider-Man grapple mechanic that tends to allow you to swing around like a flying shinobi in the air, yet this does create a newfound freedom of movement in a From Software game that we have yet to see before, also including a new dedicated jump button which allows you to jump in and out of battles or in and out of swipes when an enemy's right up in your face or whenever somebody's about to shoot an arrow at you, which is quite nice. The entirety of Sekiro is planned out in front of you with a character that you can't change or customize. Everything in front of you is something to be unlocked or to be gotten, whereas in the Soul series you could create what you wanted, or the Bloodborne series you could change a little bit here and there. But whenever you look at Sekiro, the only difference between player is by how far a player is or how much they're willing to grind for experience to unlock skill. Now, is this streamlined experience hinder anything in Sekiro? Absolutely not. This game is beautiful. Right out of the gate, you will notice how beautiful and gritty the world of Sekiro is presented to you. From its realistic sword clashes of you and your enemies, Sekiro presents itself as this gritty and beautiful world now, something From Software likes to do, they like to present their story as little pieces here and there that you have to go and find and piece together and ultimately formulate the story yourself. Now, is that necessarily a bad thing? No. Even though the story is placed out within the full dark and gritty world, it is still a story that people can come to love even if they've never played the Soulsborne series before. It is a story of loyalty and a story of hardship. It is something that somebody and anybody can come to terms with and fully grasp the struggle that the main character Wolf is going through. You start to be able to understand Wolf's struggles right out of the gate whenever you have to fight a boss that you have no chance of winning against. Fun little quip it though, you actually can defeat this boss, but From Software decides that no, even if you do defeat this boss, you still end up losing anyways. So Wolf, no matter if he overcomes his opponent or not, will end up losing an arm which ties us into the next part. One of the many differences of Sekiro compared to the previous From Software titles is the use of the new prosthetic arm. Even though it is not too far off from Bloodborne's offhand transforming weapon mechanic, this prosthetic arm allows a player to use a wide array of weapons, making you feel like a little dark and broody inspector gadget. Yet, even though this mechanic is cool in concept, its use of spirit emblems creates an ammo system that makes the arm unusable at times. And honestly, beyond turning wood shields into mere splinters with the hand axe and something using more of like the firecrackers or umbrella to get a cheap shot off once or twice on a boss, you may never really end up finding yourself using this arm in any sort of significant way, which kind of puts you back into the old From Software style of parrying and dodging whenever you're 1v1ing a fight. Now, granted, it is a lot easier to do in Sekiro because in Sekiro, a player can continuously hit the block button to almost always block an attack as long as it is not unblockable. Some people will look at this and think that maybe Sekiro is a little bit easier than the Soulsborne series. Well, let me let you in on something. Sekiro is brutal to the core. This is a From Software game. Do not expect anything less than absolute brutality from this company. Sekiro is savage after savage after savage, not giving you one second to breathe when you have to be in one opponent's face after another opponent, after another opponent, after another opponent, never being able to back away and take a breather and to the point where even some bosses don't allow you to recover or even heal without them one-shotting you. Now mentioning recovering, something that's new to Sekiro that has never been in a From Software game before is the use of resurrection. Now, once the player dies, he can resurrect and continue the fight. Yet, this does not make the game any easier. You're gonna be 1v1 dueling all of your opponents and you're gonna be so close to them, you can give them a kiss on the cheek. Even though you'd imagine that resurrection would give you a way to stealth around opponents or give you a break here and there. Yes, that mechanic does exist, but you never really find yourself using it. 
and you find out the resurrection is just more of a role in the story. After Wolf resurrects so many times, you'll start to find out that there's people around the world that are coughing and getting sick with something called Dragon Rot. Without going into complete detail, it pretty much lowers the chances for you to receive unforeseen aid, which is the game's random number generator of if you lose half of your gold or sen in this game and experience upon each death or not. The more you resurrect, the more people are filled with dragon rot, and the more they're filled with dragon rot, the lower your chances are of receiving unforeseen aid. Now, if you're not receiving unforeseen aid, then yes, your sen or your currency and your experience will be pretty much halved after every time you've died. But honestly, I don't expect anything different from anything in the Soulsborne series. Now, enough of calling this game a Soulsborne game though. Something that does make Sekiro completely different is its new focus on your enemy's posture. So posture is something that all your enemies have and upon hitting them, countering them, parrying them, or doing some sort of special ability like jump kicking or etc., clashing with their blows, you're able to build up their posture, and once it's built up all the way, you can deliver a death blow or a finisher to your opponent, which is quite cool and sometimes makes an entire boss fight feel completely worth it once you give that final finisher. Now, bosses tend to have multiple meters, so you have to finish them off multiple times, but I don't expect anything less of the severity and difficulty of this game. Anyways, Sekiro tends to focus on this posture meter and your opponent's vitality bar. A vitality bar is their health, as it sounds like, and their posture meter is their posture. Once their posture is completely broken and their meter is completely full all the way, you're able to do a death blow or a finisher move on your opponent. This mechanic is incredibly fine-tuned and sometimes gives you no room for breathing or error. Because if you mess up here and there, your enemy's posture can be completely healed within seconds. Unless you get their vitality low enough. And if you're trying to work their vitality down, you'll end up seeing a boss fight lasting more than 20 minutes sometimes. Sekiro is, yes, very fine-tuned in its fighting and dueling mechanic, but sometimes hitboxes amaze me by some of its ridiculousness and what seemed to be a little cheap. Thankfully, though, this jank is not common in the game and does not happen too often to the point where it hurts its presentation. Sekiro, following its predecessors, focuses on telling a story and building the challenge around a lengthy list of mini-boss and boss fights, streamed right after one another with very little room to breathe or take a break. Sekiro is not for anyone who is looking for a title unlike previous From Software titles, yet this game is for veterans of the Soulsborne series or for people intrigued and drawn to the title's difficulty. Do not let the fact that Sekiro allows the player to resurrect make you stray away from realizing the difficulty and the severity of this game. Sekiro is a very difficult game and sometimes even more difficult than the Souls series. And yes, I said that. In conclusion, you will find yourself dying way more than twice. Its difficulty forces its players to forget how they are used to playing games and makes them conform to a hard and fine-tuned system of fighting and stealth. Sekiro may beat you to a pulp and leave you crying, but if you enjoy the challenge, you will, and I guarantee you, you will come back again and again and again for another beating, which ultimately leads you to one of the most difficult and wow final fights of video game history. Sekiro on our list gets a 93%, which lands it at a solid 4.5 out of 5 stars on our Critical Corner scale. I can safely say that anybody who enjoys the Soulsborne series will safely enjoy this game. And if you're looking for a great story with an incredible difficulty that will pound you to a pulp, Sekiro is the game for you. Now, if you like more content like this, please leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment down below if you agree with our rating. We'd like to hear from you guys. Uh, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at StatXMedia. And we'll see you guys next time. I'm PJ, and I'm out.